Come dream with me tonight. Hi there. How are you? Hey, guess what? I'm thinking of a story that I'd like to tell you. This story started one day when Grubby, Gimmick, and I were getting ready to go out and test the airship. Gimmick had thought of some new things to add to the airship. Let's hurry. I can't wait to try the new pliable habitat. You mean the tent, Gimmick? Herb did. Call it what you will. I think it was a stroke of genius to turn the airbag into a shelter. Yes, I think you're right, Gimmick. It was a very good idea. Well, we can't leave until we've had breakfast. Come and get your oatmeal. Hmm, where's my monkey wrench? Uh, 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 what's this on my gyro distinguisher? Here, Teddy, I'll get you some oatmeal. Thank you, Grubby. Hmm, what's this in the oatmeal? It's oatmeal. Grubby, you got oatmeal on my gyro distinguisher. It's a monkey wrench. Gimmick, you dropped your monkey wrench in my oatmeal. Grubby, why must you be so messy? <laughs> you could have ruined this fine precision instrument with your oatmeal. Messy precision instrument? You've spoiled a perfectly good batch of oatmeal with your greasy old monkey wrench. Grubby, gimmick, it's all right. Good oatmeal? Haven't you ever tasted that stuff? Oh, yeah? Uh, why should I always be the one to clean up your messes? My messes? I'm all the time picking up after you. Grubby, gimmick, stop it, both of you. Well, he's... Yeah, but he's... Stop it right now. You're both acting very foolish. Oh, all right. I'm sorry, gimmick. <laughs> yes, Grubby, <laughs> I'm sorry, too. Well, Grubby and Gimmick stopped being upset with each other, and we took off in the airship. That was a very good takeoff. And now, according to my anti-gravity compass, we are headed do... Uh, do... There uh, must be a slight malfunction. <laughs> uh, we're headed do that way. Gimmick, I'm still amazed at this wonderful airship. You should be very proud of having invented it. <laughs> oh, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> you are quite right. This aircraft does represent a major breakthrough. And to think that it operates totally on hot air. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, uh, yes, Grubby, uh, that's the key word. Uh, imagination. Now someone had to think it up And someone had to build it And if it doesn't work at first Then, then why not, not try, try again? again? So warm up your imagination And with some interpretation And a little perspiration Anything can fly But nothing ever happens If you don't really try when first I built my tube fan just to cool a room in summer, the reason that it pulled, not pushed, is still not really clear. Imagine that. But then the notion hit me as it swallowed half my arm. This thing could make the dust inside my house just disappear. Your vacuum duster upper? Precisely. So warm up your imagination And with some interpretation And a little perspiration Anything can fly But nothing ever happens If you don't really try Now it was my intention When I built my slow bug catcher A wonderful invention That might rid the world of pests Slow ones anyway But somehow all the bugs got out More easily than in so now the birds outside all use bug catchers for their nests. <laughs> so science wins again. It was nothing. 
amazing stories just like that are so hard to deny. It shows good things might happen if you really, really try. Now, fancy pocket watches haven't always been around. That's, That's right. right. You can't go out and just pick up a light bulb off the ground. What's, What's a, a light, light bulb? bulb? Hmm, I don't know yet. Someone will have to think it up. Someone will have to build it. And drawing boards are used to having people try again. Especially gimmicks. So keep those old brain juices going. Keep that perspiration flowing. There's no way of ever knowing when something might fly. Warm up your imagination and with some interpretation and a little perspiration anything can fly. Now sometimes even my inventions might just go awry. Oh really? Yes. But nothing good will happen if you don't really try. We flew the airship to the edge of the great desert so Gimmick could try out his new invention, the pliable habitat. You mean the tent? Uh, you go right ahead and call it a tent if you like, Grubby. The fact remains that it allows us to very easily turn the airship into a house. And now first, we must lower the yard arm to its lowest position. Okay, Gimmick. How's that? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> and now, uh, let's lower the airbag. Lower away. I got this end. A little lower. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Uh, tie it off. All right, now, uh, let's raise the hot air tube up through the top of the airbag. Okay. Heave ho. There. Well, <laughs> there it is. Well, how about that? It does look like a house. Gimmick's idea did work very well. We were able to turn the airship into a house. There's a lot of room in here, too. Now, I propose we stay here overnight to test the pliable habitat. Uh, we're very close to the great desert. Hmm. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, there'll be a torrential rain or, or a violent sandstorm. Oh, swell. Hmm. If we're gonna be here all night, I think we ought to go out and rustle up something to eat. <laughs> Somehow I had a feeling you were going to say that, Grubby. So we walked away from the airship looking for food. Soon Grubby discovered some root plants. Then we found some wild berries. Before long, it was starting to get dark. Hmm. Uh-oh. Hey, Teddy, doesn't that cave remind you of the one where the mud blups captured us? Yes, I guess it does a little. Oh, don't worry, my boy. Why not? I've done a rather thorough evaluation of the mud blup creatures, and for them to be found this far north is uh, 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 virtually impossible. Suddenly, we were surrounded by mud blups. <laughs> The mudblups were very angry, just like the ones we had been captured by before. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Mudblup. Is there something that we've done to irritate you? Keep moving. Keep moving. Uh, hey, would you guys like any of these roots? Just be quiet and keep moving. Hmm, that's funny. Those other mud bluffs loved my roots, too. Um, uh, uh, there is a possibility that these are a slightly different species of mud blub. Uh, that would account for my miscalculation about them being this far north. Oh, I was wondering how you were going to account for that. Oh, you three stop talking. Get into the cell. The mud blubs took us through their tunnels to a cell. They closed the door and locked it. We'll deal with you later. Well, I'm glad they're gone. Why do you suppose every mud blub we run into wants to lock us up? I don't know, Grubby. I can't understand it. Yes, it is a very bad habit. We waited there for many hours. Then we heard a loud rumble. What was that? It sounds like thunder. Hey, Gimmick, 
Maybe you're gonna get that rainstorm you wanted. Grubby was right. Before long, we could hear the sound of rain on the ground overhead. Then rainwater started seeping into the cell. Oh, fellas, my feet are getting muddy. Hey, that gives me an idea. We all took mud and smeared it on ourselves. Oh, uh, Teddy, why are we doing this? You probably know why we did it, don't you? It's so we'll look like mud blocks, Grubby. Then we can escape. Oh, I get it. That's smart, Teddy. Thank you, Grubby. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Guard. Oh, Mr. Guard. Yoo-hoo. What's going on here? Hey, what are you doing in there? Where are those other three? Blah, 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 blah. We got locked in here by mistake. Uh, let us out so we can find them. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, please? All right, get out of there. You're gonna be in trouble if we can't find them. We made our way through the tunnels, pretending to look for the escaped prisoners. Where did they go? Let's find them. Where did we go? Uh, where did we go? Not we, Gimmick. Oh, yes. I mean, they. Where did they... Where did they go? <laughs> Who are you looking for? The three escaped prisoners. Uh, have you seen them? What do they look like? Uh, oh, uh, one is about my height and very smart. Well, never mind that now. Which way is the entrance? Uh, uh, it's just down there and to the right. Thank you very much. We finally found the entrance to the Mud Blub City and started running back towards the airship. It was still raining, and the mud washed off of us as we ran. But then we noticed that the mud blocks were following us. Oh, look, Teddy, they're after us. Run! Run! We didn't think that we were going to get away. But then the morning sun broke through the clouds, and the mudblups ran for the darkness of their tunnels. Teddy, now I remember how sensitive the mudblups' eyes are to bright light. Indeed. <laughs> That's why they never come out during the daytime. We made it back to the airship. It looks like everything in here is nice and dry. Apparently, the pliable habitat passed the test. I'll start a fire in the stove so we can dry off. We sat around the fire getting warm and talking about how lucky we were to have escaped the mudblups. Yeah, we were lucky, but we would still be locked up in that cell if you hadn't thought of how to escape, Teddy. Oh, thank you, Grubby. Yes, indeed, Teddy. <laughs> you certainly did use your imagination. And it's good to be able to come back to this nice, cozy pliable habitat. Well, thank you, Grubby. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, I'm sorry about the monkey wrench. Yeah, and I'm sorry about the oatmeal. <laughs> you know, after seeing how sloppy those mud blops are, Gimmick, I think you're the best housekeeper in the world. <laughs> <laughs> after we were dry, we got the airship ready and lifted off. Okay, gang, back to Gimmick's house. Do that way. <laughs> well, I think that Grubby and Gimmick and I all had a chance to remember just how lucky we were to have good friends. And I think we learned a little lesson, too. That when you live with other people, it's lots easier if everybody helps to keep things neat. Mud block. Mud block. He's a walking upright dirt clad, a nitty gritty slob. He's a come to life mud puddle, a really yucky blob. He 
He's dirty on the outside and on the inside too. He tries to make you think that being neat is hard to do. So don't invite a mud luck to your house. You could be sorry. Or you're gonna be dusting for a year. No, no, no. No, don't invite a mud luck to your house. They'll be gritting all your clothing and grime inside your ear. There'll be gunk in all the carpets and handprints on the wall. There'll be rings around the bathtub and fuzzies down the hall. He isn't very choosy. He spreads his dirt around. He wants to make the floors inside your house look like the ground. So don't invite a mud block to your house. Or you're gonna be dusting for a year. No, no. No, don't invite a mud block to your house. Or clean your filthy room up is all that you will hear. The furniture he touches will suddenly look used. Your bed is a disaster and the couch is all abused. And one place he likes most of all is on your closet floor. He piles things up so doggone high that you can't close the door. Mud block. The doggy hop. The mud block. The Mud block, probably get from mud block. He's a walking upright dirt clod, a nitty gritty slob. He's a come to life mud puddle. He's a really yucky blob. One thing about a mud block, he isn't hard to find. He leaves a trail of dust and dirt three inches deep behind. A mud block doesn't clean things up. He doesn't quite know how. He says he'll do it later, but don't bother me right now. He teaches you bad habits. He teaches you to lie. The smudges round the light switch must, must be, be some, some other guy. guy. So don't invite a mud block to your house. You could be sorry, or you're gonna be dusting for a year. No, no, no. No, don't invite a mud block to your house. Your ears will be so full of dirt that you can't even hear. So every now and then a little trick that you might do is check and see if there's a mudblup living there with you. And if there is and it was you who asked him to come in, then clean up all his messes and just send him out again. Don't invite a mudblup to your house, whatever you do, or you're gonna be dusting for a year. No, no. No, don't invite a mud block to your house. Your ears will be so full of dirt that you can't even hear. Mud block, the doggy drop. 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 Hey, mud block, mud block. Get out of here.